Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're just going to give everybody a minute or two just to jump on. Uh, make sure you've got your coffee, your, 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 your tea, whatever else you drink at 11 o'clock in the morning if you've opened your uh, brew dog uh, calendar already. Uh, I know some people have from social media, so that's a bit brave at nine o'clock in the morning, one, one chap I saw, but each to their own, I suppose. Um, so thanks for joining us today. We're going to be, uh, I'm going to be handing over shortly to, uh, to our wonderful panel um, and our wonderful uh, app that's joining us today, Workflow Max. Um, so I'm going to be handing over to the team. Um, and we're really focusing on today um, in terms of helping your clients move to a, a cloud job management system and how it's never actually been easier. Um, and I think everything cloud-based at the moment is really prolific, obviously, with lots of people home working and um, lots of different uh, types of uh, companies working in different ways and having to sort of adapt to the current climate. So I think uh, making sure everything's cloud-based, especially around job management system, is really key. And that's why we wanted to give something to uh, the audience at XG Magazine today, um, some further insight onto that. So um, just a bit of housekeeping for I hand over, because uh, the team at Workflow Maps can do a much better job than I can um, in terms of going through the detail. Um, of, of Workflow Max, what it can do and how it can help you and your clients as well. Um, some housekeeping, um, if you look at the bottom of your screen, um, you should have a Q&A and a chat box section. Uh, please just drop something in there, make sure that we can hear you. Uh, you can hear us even. Um, you can hear us, you can see us. Um, if you have any issues uh, throughout today, um, usually just closing it and going back to the original link uh, in the email should sort it out as well. Um, or kicking the kids off Netflix um, in the next room usually helps if you're finding that you've got a uh, bad broadband speeds and uh, that's always one um, so if you just drop us a couple of messages just so we can see people are coming through because everybody's coming through thick and fast now which is great so i'll give it probably a couple more seconds and then we'll get going and um, just to make sure we keep on track with time um, as we're going through as well please ask any questions as you're going along so you don't forget we might not answer them straight away but we are going to have a q a se uh, section at the end um, of the webinar which we hope to get everybody's questions in then um, as well. If we do run out of time, don't get through them all. We'll try to get back in touch with people. But please answer, please ask your questions as we're going along uh, on there. Thanks, Cheryl, Lance, Eugene. Uh, you can hear us, which is good uh, good news. So I think with that, we're going to uh, we'll crack on and make a start. So I'm going to hand over to Sarah now from Workflow Max, who's going to give you an introduction to uh, the system and go from there. Awesome. Thank you, David. So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, as David said, my name is Sarah Pink, and I am the Workflow Max Customer Success Manager based here in the UK. Now, we do have both accountants and bookkeepers, our advisors, along with business owners joining us today. So just note that some things we cover may not be relevant to everyone, but most things we cover are. So a little bit about me, as the Customer Success Manager, I am here to help businesses using Workflow Max to its full potential and really gain efficiencies in their businesses by doing so. Also to be able to get those powerful insights out of Workflow Max to understand their business more. Now I'm not gonna to dwell too much on it, but 2020 has really highlighted the need for many things in business. So the need for remote working at the drop of a hat. So of course the need for those cloud-based products. Cash flow for businesses is of course very topical at the moment, but also the need for service-based businesses to really understand their profit on projects and how to increase that profit if needed. And that's where Workflow Max and you, the advisors, really come in. Having a platform like Workflow Max means you can quickly see the financials on each project and understand quickly if you or your clients are going over the estimated costs of the project. And this meaning better decisions can be made quicker, such as charging the customer more or tailoring quotes for similar projects in the future. Awesome, so I'm just gonna share my screen. Hopefully this goes okay. Awesome, I believe it has. Um, so today we are gonna cover what is Workflow Max? Who is Workflow Max best suited for? We're then gonna jump in and take a look at the product and have a super quick product demo. I'll also explain what becoming a Workflow Max advisor for the accountants and bookkeepers on here, what it can do for you. I am then going to hand over to our wonderful Natalie, our head of Northern Hemisphere sales, who is going to host a panel session with some amazing guests who will talk about how to get Workflow Max implemented into either your business or your client's business. So what is Workflow Max? Workflow Max is a complete job management solution for service based businesses. It's cloud based and of course zero product very customizable and comprehensive tool to manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of a project. So you can manage, track and report on every aspect of a job, giving customers a better view of their people, their profit and their performance. 
So as you can see from this slide, Workflow Max has tools from leads to quotes to jobs to invoicing to reporting. So Workflow Max allows businesses to manage their projects from the beginning to the end all in that one place. This of course providing them with a clear understanding of their profitability on a job level. Who is Workflow Max best suited for? Now although we have over 40 different industries successfully using the product, the most common ones are these. So our creative agents our IT services, our building and construction, engineers, architects and business consultants. But basically any service-based business who run projects for longer than a day. So for example, if I'm an IT company building um, software for a client, Workflow Max would be great for me. Whereas if I'm an electrician, seeing numerous customers in a day, it potentially is not the best suited software out there. Now, right, let's jump in and have a really quick look at the product. Um, so my demo company is a consulting firm, but what I'm going to take you through uh, can relate to any business type. And for those of you who are not too familiar with Workflow Max, this is going to be a super quick demo. However, if you do want a bit more of an extensive look at how to use the product for you and your team, we are going to provide our email addresses at the end of the session. So please, please reach out to one of us. Awesome, so when we first log into Workflow Max, similar to Xero, we land on our dashboard. Now the dashboard is unique to me as a user. So straight away, I can see the time I've entered into the system. I can see any important dates that I need to keep track of and any jobs that I'm assigned or should be working on. From left to right, we then have our client tab. It does what it says on the tin. That's a list of all our clients, all our client details. And that can also be linked to zero contacts as well. Then we have our jobs tab. Um, so under jobs, we have got a few options. And just note that Workflow Max does have really extensive user permissions. Um, so what it means is if I want staff to not be able to access certain things, I can tick on and tick off those permissions. Then we have business. A couple of things I'll point out under this tab is leads. So we do have an additional lead manager that you can add on to Workflow Max. And it's just a really cool place to manage any leads that are coming into the business and taking them through hopefully to a client. Um, and then we've got our purchases. So this is where we can create our purchase orders for our suppliers, send them over to our suppliers and also assign those purchases to our jobs as well. Then we've got our report tab. Under reports, we've got our standard reports. So these are similar to Xero if you are using Xero. You can run these reports in real time, get the data, um, export them to CSV or PDF format. And then we have probably my favorite feature is Report Builder. So really, really flexible Report Builder. You can build all of your own reports, um, customize them to what your business wanna see. Um, you can do them based on jobs, on job tasks, really loads of details, save them and run them as often as you would like. Now on the right hand side, we have got a little clock. So one of the places where you can enter time, um, this is probably the most used um, time feature. So really quickly, you can enter your time into the system. We have got a little messages um, box. So in here, Workflow Max will surface any new releases, any things that you need to be aware of, they'll pop in a message there. So just keep an eye on that one. On the little information, you can um, add on your work walkthroughs. So it basically just walks through the product and, and shows you how to use it. And then we've got our question mark, which is where all of your help, if you need help, just navigate to this question mark. We've got our support center, which is like Google for Workflow Max. So you basically type in your question um, and it will surface up some articles for you. And we also have contact support. Now that does take you through to zero to log a case with zero support. Um, but just note that we do have a dedicated support team specifically for Workflow Max. Awesome. So one of my clients has asked me to send over a quote for a full consulting job. So I am going to quickly search for my client using our powerful global search. So in global search, you can search for all various things, uh, your client, your job number. Um, you can also search for phone number as well in there. So I'm just going to search for Rex Media Group. I'm going to pop into that client record. Now in the client record, I can see how much is awaiting payment, so how much the customer owes me. Um, I can see any invoices overdue and any work in progress that we haven't yet invoiced out. I can also see any billing information and we have this wonderful feature called custom fields. 
So in Workflow Max, you can create various custom fields against different records. Um, and this allows me just to store additional information against those records. And I can also report on those custom fields as well. Perfect, so I am going to go to new and add a new quote. And it's gonna populate my client name for me. Um, under template, these are actually my job templates. So I can create these templates and it, what it would do is populate all of my tasks and costs for me. So that if I've got similar jobs that I always do, I can create those templates and it just saves a lot of time. So I'm gonna add in full consulting. We can add in a description here. So I'm gonna add in across the business. <clears throat> we can add in a budget field if we want, that's, that's just a static field. However, I am going to go through quite an extensive quote here, so I'm not going to pop populate anything there. Um, and then we've got our quote date and when it's valid too. So I'm going to hit next. <clears throat> and that's going to bring up my quote. Um, so all of that information is coming through, my descriptions through, and I can see that from my template, I've got all of my tasks and my costs coming through as well. Um, <clears throat> so from my template, I do, I do have a time budget on each of the tasks, um, but I can go into each of them. So for instance, investigating, might just change that estimated time. I think this one might just take eight hours, so I can change that. Awesome. So. As you can see here, we've got the task, we've got the time, the estimated time that we're gonna spend on that task. We've got the base rate and the cost. So the time times the base rate equals the cost to me as a business. We then have our billable rate. So that billable um, hourly rate that we're gonna charge the customer and how much we are actually gonna charge the customer based on the time and billable rate. If I scroll down, we've got our costs here as well. So they're coming through from my template. Now, it being COVID, I'm probably not gonna stay in a hotel, so I can quickly jump into that cost and delete that cost out. And then we've got our mileage there as well. So I can pop into the mileage and I think potentially I'm gonna um, travel about 100 miles for this client, so I can save that. Awesome, so I can see the subtotal, the VAT, and I'm happy with that. I can simply issue and print. What this is gonna do is take me to my print options. Now, by default, everybody does have access to the system default template, but you can also create your own templates in here if you want to um, tailor it to how you want the client to see, to see the quote. Um, and I've created my own here. So if I press print, you'll see that my logo is coming through. So the client knows that it's definitely from me. I've got my address. All of my information is coming through. So my time versus my rate. And if I scroll down, I've included some terms and conditions of the quote as well in that in that template. <clears throat> Once I'm happy, I can then email it over to my client and that email address is going to come through from my client record. I can export it to Word or PDF if I wanted to um, customize it a little bit more. Awesome. So the client is actually pretty happy with this quote. Um, so back in the quote now, because I have issued that quote, I now have three buttons down the bottom. So the client might have come back and said, actually, I don't want you to present the information so we could, we could revise it and, and take out presenting information. I can simply accept the quote or I can decline the quote. Now for this one, the client's happy, so I'm going to accept. And a really nice flow here is all of the information from the quote is then gonna populate my job for me. So it takes me to create my job. Um, all the information is coming through, my description that I tailored. We can change the state of the job. So these states are fully customizable. You can have whatever job states you like to track where each job is at. Um, so I might change that to in progress. We then also have categories. Um, so for instance, if I, I've, got ad hoc consulting and monthly consulting here. So basically I assign each of my jobs to one of these categories. And what it means is I can then report on my different revenue streams. And I might see that actually monthly consulting is giving me more profit. So I might concentrate more on that monthly consulting. And the really nice thing about categories is it does flow through into zero tracking if you're using zero tracking as well. Awesome, so the schedule information, my start date and my due date, this job's probably due on Christmas Eve. Um, and then I can assign my staff as well and I can hit save. And that's created my job for me. So all the information is coming through as you see. 
I can add milestones to a job. So that's just key dates that I want to be reminded of. For instance, if I've got a client meeting, I can add that into that date, um, into a milestone. And that does flow through really nicely into my dashboard as well. So it just reminds me um, for those key milestones. And if I scroll down, we'll see all of the tasks coming through from the quote. We've got our estimated time um, also coming through. And just note that um, tasks are components of a job. So you've got a job is a big piece of work and tasks are components of that job. Um, and really nice thing about tasks is you can assign the different tasks to different people as well. Um, so if I had one person working on the investigating, I can assign the task to them. Awesome. So now at the top, I'm going to head to the timesheet tab in the job. Um, we can change the date here and I'm going to pop some time to investigating. So potentially I actually spent seven hours today. I can pop in a timesheet note. Um, investigating. Um, the business. There's a lot of pressure when you um, type on a webinar. <laughs> um, so I can save that. Um, and potentially Johnny actually helped me out a little bit with investigating. So he spent about five hours on that as well. So we've got two timesheet entries in there. Um, at the top, we've also got notes, so we can add notes to a job um, and anybody who's got access to this job can then see those notes. We've also got documents, so you can attach different files into the job. For instance, if I was a design firm and I've done some drawings, I can attach those documents into the job there. Then we've got our job costs. Now, if I incurred more costs, for example, any lunch or meals, um, I can add the cost in here. But we've also got our mileage coming through and that's coming through from our quote as an estimated cost. And what I can do is if I've incurred that cost and I'm happy with it, I can simply tick the little box. If it works. Let me just refresh that screen. As we can see, now the box is ticked for that actual cost. So that's created that actual cost for me. Um, I'm going to head straight into my financials. It won't be too much longer anyway. Um, so on the financial tab, we have got our estimated billing and that is coming through from my quote or estimated um, time that I've already popped in. Um, you can change that if you need to, to, actual, to show your actual time and cost as well. Um, if I scroll down, we've got my quote um, that's been accepted. And then on the left hand side, we've got this nice print financial summary. And this is one of the most powerful reports in Workflow Max. It basically just gives me my whole financial summary of this job. Um, if I scroll down, you'll see I've got all of my tasks and my costs, my estimated costs to the business, the quoted amount that I've quoted to the client, the actual cost because I've popped some time to it, and also the billable amount. We can then see my profit, time, nice time summary, um, our staff efficiency, and we can also see some timesheet entries as well there. And the nice thing of this is I can email it over. So if my manager wanted to see it, I can email it, email it over to my manager. I can export to Excel, export to CSV or PDF as well. Awesome, so now I'm happy with that. I'm actually gonna do a invoice to the client. So over on the left-hand side, we can select new final invoice. And we've got a couple of options. We can invoice based off actual time and cost, or we can invoice on quoted or estimated time and costs. So if I hit next, because we're going to uh, do the quote, um, you'll see that everything's coming through from the quote. I've also got my timesheet notes if I've entered some in, um, and that's just how I've configured the system. And once I'm completely happy, that matches my quote of what the client wanted, we can simply hit approve. Now you can approve and print it here, and that will take you to your invoice um, and you can send that to your client. However, for me, I actually like to invoice out of zero for um, all of my invoices to my customers. So once I hit approve, that's going to flow to zero for me. And then I can use all of zeros, bells and whistles around invoicing. So your invoice reminders, your bulk sends and all that kind of cool stuff. Awesome. So very quickly, we'll pop back into our financial summary. And you'll see there that now the invoice amounts are coming through really nicely. And I can see that I've actually made a profit of 82% because I only did a little bit of the work. But um, all in all, I've made a profit of 82%. So really nice, um, nice view there. Awesome, so we'll pop back to the slides and just the last thing from me before I hand it over. Um, for the accountants and bookkeepers on here, why become a Workflow Max Advisor? 
So partnering with Workflow Max means your clients will get the benefits of your expertise, whilst you in turn can boost the value of your services. So you'll see the benefits listed here. You have the status of a certified advisor. So what that means is you can shout it from the rooftops that you're an expert in the product. You also get access to a free demo account so you can demonstrate the product to your clients or have a bit of a play to see how things work. You also get a partner discount. So if you own the subscription on behalf of your client and five zero partner points for each Workflow Max subscription that you hold, meaning that you can quickly get to that next zero level. So this list here is by no means an exhaustive list. More and more clients are coming to you as their advisors to help them with their software needs in their business. So adding Workflow Max to that toolkit will really help armor you with those conversations. And obviously it helps you when clients are using Workflow Max to really see how their business is performing and what you can do to help increase uh, their performance across the whole business. Awesome, so now I'm gonna hand over to Natalie, our head of Northern Hemisphere sales, who is gonna take you through the options of implementing Workflow Max into either your business or your client's business, and also has some special guests to talk to. So over to you, Natalie. Thank you, Sarah, that was a fab demo. Um, right guys, so what I'm gonna talk about now is the three different onboarding options that you've got when it comes to Workflow Max. The first one being a premium implementation, which is when you work alongside one of our implementation partners, two of which you're gonna meet very shortly. The second onboarding option is a guided implementation, and that's where you have five hours that are bundled in alongside our self-implementation course. The final, the third onboarding option that you have is our self-implementation course. And this is where you, a client can actually just do it themselves using that course only. So that being said, I'm gonna move on to our panel. Today, we've got three amazing people joining us. We've got David from Your Valued, Liz Tobin from Ginger Snap, and we've also got Andrew Stroud from Design Activity. So that being said, um, Liz, I'm gonna actually pick on you first. Would you like to do a little um, introduction about yourself and your business? That would be great. Yeah, good morning, thank you. Uh, I'm Liz from Ginger Snap. Um, I'm, a, I'm a software and business person. My background is understanding people's processes um, yes I get to hear about their gripes as well um, understanding what the business needs to do and then helping to write, wrap the right technology around it to, de to deliver all that um, having that kind of background uh, a mixture of technology and business gives me um, quite a nice uh, varied approach to services for some clients I just help them with scoping so I help them make the decision of which job management platform is actually best for them it's really helpful that they were able to see on screen different scenarios in Workflow Max um, and to see if it would actually fit their business. And then uh, if, they, if Workflow Max is the right thing for them, um, going ahead can be in a couple of different ways. Um, sometimes uh, there's a person in the business who they want to, to really learn the product and do the implementation themselves. So I'll act as an implementation coach and go with it, go uh, alongside them throughout the journey and help make sure that it's implemented properly. But of course, they get to learn absolutely loads along the way. Um, also, obviously, I do full setup, uh, migrate in the live projects, um, training, support, configuration, uh, everything you would expect from a complete setup service. Uh, I like working with my existing uh, Workflow Max customers as well, because uh, Business always changes and the processes change. So the great thing is just keeping, keep tweaking your workflow max as you go along, uh, adjusting it to fit how you want to deliver your, your new products and services. Um, I also really enjoy online training. So uh, I have a really flexible approach to training, uh, which is all the more important in the current climate, but uh, it can be a little, as little as an hour online. If you just want to learn how to invoice, great, hop on and you know we'll go through training. So. So yeah, fair, fairly varied uh, approach to Workflow Max. Thanks, Liz. Um, David, um, would you like to do a little introduction and talk about the services that you guys offer? Hello, Natalie. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Thanks. David Oliver. I'm with a company called Valued. Um, we've been working with um, Workflow Max and its uh, sister product, Zero Practice Manager, for the last seven years. I've got a, a history and a background within technical support and uh, training in various large companies. And uh, that really lends itself to helping implement uh, Workflow Max for our clients these days. We've 
over the past seven years, implemented the system for literally hundreds of businesses um, across the UK, Europe, and the globe. Um, every business is unique, but there are certain similar factors between businesses when we're coming to a product like this. What that means is we've been able to really develop a, a, a solid method for implementing this for clients. Um, we offer a range of services. So this could be anything from um, a simple chat. You know, you've got a couple of questions about the system and you might need them answered. So you know that it's going to be the right product for you. It could be that you want us to do a more in-depth audit to make sure that we can get all of the facets of your business catered for, or it may be that you are wanting us to assist you with some targeted consultancy. So in that sense, again, you might be implementing this yourselves and you just need an expert to be on hand to be able to guide you in the right direction. Or it may be that you want us to do the heavy lifting and therefore we can perform a full implementation, including setup and training for you. So lots of variety available there. And it means that we can really tailor that service to the needs of the individual client. We offer support after the fact as well. So you, any new system that a, a business puts in place, those first few months are crucial. And there's always a, a wealth of questions that come out of that. So we can be on hand to assist with that, to provide additional tr support and training when it's required and just make sure that that transition is as smooth as possible. Um, we deal with a number of other systems as well, but I've got to admit our favorite really is Workflow Max and Zero Practice Manager. Um, and yeah, certainly the integration with Zero is just a natural extension of the product from there. Brilliant. That takes me very nicely onto the next question, David. So thank you for that. Um, why do you choose Workflow Max to implement? So from our point of view, Workflow Max is it's a really really flexible tool so it's got something for everybody and this is really the nice thing about it i know at the beginning of the presentation we talked about key industries that it's really suited for at the same time it can pretty much cope with anything i'm not saying it's the one size fits all you know there's always going to be certain things that some people might want that it's maybe not as good as other systems are but in general it is absolutely marvelous at coping with a business workflow so you everything, for, as you've seen there, from the lead coming in, creating the quote, being able to convert that into a job, being able to track that through and see its progress, make sure that people are adding in the right notes, the right time entries, kicking out the invoices at the end. The whole end-to-end -end process is there within Workflow Max, and it's all reportable as well. So from a visibility point of view, it's fantastic. Thanks, David. Liz, I'm going to fire that one at you now as well. Why, why Workflow Max? Oh, well, I totally agree with David um, for the customization aspect. And I think that job management is such a key part of the business. It's, you know, it's what we do, it's what we deliver, and you need to make that as agile as possible. Um, so absolutely no software package will do everything you want, but if you can mold it around your processes, make it yours, um, that's that's really where Workflow Max will sort of flourish. The other thing uh, which is super important for me is the integration with Xero. Um, and you, you sort of expect that because it's a Xero product, but um, I've noticed with other job management systems, you, you don't get quite as much flexibility. And, and clients like to see their PL the way they like to see it, and they like to report and the way they like to report. And why should that change? So Workflow Max is flexible enough to be able to push data into zero in a very, very specific way. So um, it's it's really useful. Um, and that integration, I think, is a key factor. Thanks, Liz. Um, actually, I've got a couple of questions that I'm going to direct David at yourself and your client, Andrew, that we've got on the panel today. David, some, a question that kind of a lot of people probably have out there is how easy was it actually? How easy is it to, um, to implement and, and to kind of onboard Andrew? It's, I've got to admit, the, the onboarding and the implementation can be easier than you would think is probably the best way to put that. Um, it absolutely does help if you've got a, a really great client like Andrew. Andrew was super keen. He was very well prepared. Um, the team, again, were eager to learn and to take on the new system. And, and you cannot put a price on that in terms of creating a, a very seamless transition from a previous system to a new system like Workflow Max. Those are absolutely essential factors. At the same time, the physical work itself is 
the part that can be boiled down into a process. So as long as your data is extractable from your old system, as long as it can be put into a format that Workflow Max will understand, you can import customers and suppliers, you can import your jobs, you can import your historical time, you can import your costs, anything to give you everything that you need to then continue to work the way you've always done. So as Liz was saying, the customization of the system allows us to mold that around the individual business. And again, that's where the consultancy process is vital. And certainly in case of value of um, Andrew and of design activity, you know, they were absolutely keen to uh, embrace that process and give us what we needed. So we knew everything we needed to do in order to set that system up the way Andrew needed it. Okay, so Andrew, quick question to you. How easy, how easy did you find it? How easy was it actually for you guys to move over? Um, well, for me, actually, surprisingly uh, easy. I, I, I would actually say that, uh, Though David said sort of we embrace it with enthusiasm, to be honest with you, although I run a, a branding and packaging design consultancy that spends its time working with computers, uh, I'm the dinosaur in the company and actually I was dreading it. Um, I think that the, uh, the, the, the key was, I think, trying to get our processes uh, conveyed to David so we could understand what we needed. Um, and I, I you know, I've got to be honest, I was expecting a lot of hassle and I was very, very surprised how easy it was, which has made me a very happy person because uh, I've gone from being Mr. Dinosaur to knowing more about Workflow Max than almost anybody else in the company, which is um, very frustrating for some of them. <laughs> That's brilliant. So what do you think, what has Workflow Max actually done for your business, would you say? Well, I mean, I suppose if, if it's talking generally, it, it's uh, it, I think what flow, what workflow Max does is it's it kind of it simplifies it, the the job costing process because the uh, the system we had before was like a sledgehammer to crack a nut. It was really quite complicated. It wasn't very user friendly. It was very expensive. And even though it was meant to be compatible with the accounts package we were using at the time, Sage. Uh, it, it actually invariably wasn't. So we just spent so much time and frustration. So coming into Workflow Max, I think that the, the pleasant surprise was it's almost the opposite. It's, it's actually quite intuitive, even for someone like me. Um, uh, and, and it's enabled us to actually simplify the process and streamline things, you know, in terms of visibility we get, uh, ease of posting time, the visibility we get on each job. Because a lot of our jobs, you know, we, we might do we might do a hundred projects a month, you know, ranging from 200 pounds to 10,000 pounds. And therefore we need to be agile and nimble and Workflow Max just makes that bit easy. Fab. Andrew, do you have a, a kind of a favorite feature? Um, if you had to pick one. Well, in fact, I, I don't want to sort of uh, sort of be the, the lemming necessary and follow Sarah, but I, I do quite like Report Builder because obviously it's the guy managing the business. Yeah. I mean, it's just really handy being able to have some pre-templated reports. And then I work with um, David to actually have basically customized reports that gives me exactly what I need easily and quickly. So that's that would be my favorite. But as a manager, okay. I guess that would be. No, thank you. That's brilliant. Okay, I'm going to find that everybody. Um, David, what is your favourite feature? If you had to pick just one. Um, yes, thanks. Just one. Okay. Um, <laughs> above all, I think probably my favourite feature is custom fields. Um, you saw them very briefly before there in Sarah's demo, but uh, there's uh, numerous areas within the system where you can build your own uh, data fields. And that just means that you can capture any data that you want to about your clients, about the work that you're doing, and it's all reportable as well. So again, it just gives you everything that you need at your fingertips. So yeah, definitely custom fields for me. Okay, I'm gonna throw that, thank you, David. I'm gonna throw that one at you, Sarah. What would be your favorite feature? Oh, well, Andrew stole mine. <laughs> <laughs> mine is definitely Report Builder. Um, being an ex-accountant, uh, I love the insights and the reports that you get out of Report Builder and just being able to build your own reports on the data that you actually wanna see. Um, I just think it's an awesome feature in Workflow Max, to be honest. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Liz Tobin, what's your favorite feature? All of the above plus, uh, I think I'm gonna choose folders. Um, 
And that sounds like a really super simple feature, but um, we all like things that just do just do the job. Um, I'm a bit of a neat freak and I like filing things away in the right place. Um, and I've got a client who runs uh, really large projects and you can imagine that it's uh, there are so many tasks uh, dispersed among a large team. So if you tap your, you can split up your project into uh, phases and modules, any anything you want to break it down into, put it in a folder and you can run reports on the folder. Uh, super useful for the project manager because they might want to just hone in on phase one. Uh, are we losing time here? Are we uh, under budget, over budget here? So that makes it really simple. So yeah, as a neat freak, I'm going to say folders. Thank you, Liz. Um, on you that... must have one too, Natalie. Come on. You, you know this product inside out. <laughs> okay, yes, I'm going to have to give you mine, aren't I? All right. So yes. um, <laughs> thanks. For, thank you, Liz. Um, I would say probably my favourite being in sales is going to be the lead manager module. <laughs> Of course. Purely because yeah, it allows you to track all of your kind of new business as it comes in, create templates, etc. But yeah, for me, I think so. Yeah, I think it's definitely in the lead manager module, ironically. Um, <laughs> one quick question that I've got for you, Liz, and David, I'm going to ask this to you as well in a second, is as an implementation partner, are there any specific themes that you've seen that have come out of obviously the COVID situation that we've got at the moment? Mm. I think it was uh, it it was it was so difficult for many businesses, and I totally appreciate that. But for a lot of businesses, it just gave them a moment to breathe and just to take a step backwards from their business um, and the opportunity to to do stuff that they've been meaning to do for a while. And I suppose it's a bit like cleaning up your house. You know, you've got to do it, but you never quite find the time or motivation to get on with it. And COVID neatly packaged that up into one fell swoop in March. So. Um, so yeah I think a lot of people were very keen to clean up their job process make it more agile uh, workflow max is obviously a brilliant um, opportunity to do that um, <clears throat> also <clears throat> excuse me um, it's also uh, very good just to um, just to get onto the cloud and, and sort of make things a lot better and I think it was really obvious that people weren't sitting next to each other so suddenly processes aren't quite as slick as they usually are and I think that really uh, really showed up for those who are already on the cloud using Workflow Maxwell uh, again that was the time to get everything done that they'd been meaning to do so I did a lot of tweaking and a lot of training so there was zero furlough for me um, which I was very grateful for um, but also I think for businesses it is the positive thing that's come out it is giving you confidence you build a nice solid base to win future business and know with you know with confidence you'll be able to deliver that in a very uh, a very transparent way so yeah that's what I saw from COVID. Thanks Liz. So David uh, uh, would you like to add to that was there any kind of things that you saw? Yeah, certainly. Um, I, I think from my perspective we the, the, over, the overarching element we we noticed was just the, the huge surge towards adopting cloud technology. Um, it's not new and cloud technology has been around for years, but this particular situation really drove it home to people that, you know, either change or suffer the consequences because it, it just all of a sudden when people couldn't be, as you said, sitting next to each other in an office, it, it literally meant that they had no way of, of dealing with their current situation. I, I spoke to certain clients who literally their businesses shut instantly and they couldn't do anything about it. But we had, as I said, this this huge influx of people who then decided that obviously now was the time and they wanted this instantly to be able to then run their businesses because, you know, this was their opportunity to survive this. Um, it meant a lot of work, um, which is always the best type of problem to have. But at the same time, you know, this is something that I hope people do take forward and say, you know, that there's no good time other than now to get yourself onto a cloud-based platform because then it, you're never stuck. You're, you're always able to access it at that point. Um, I suppose the adjunct to that is uh, the, the great take up of things like Teams or Zoom or Google Meets and, uh, and you saw all sorts of people who'd never ever used these systems before suddenly having meetings in the cloud um, with varying degrees of success. And I don't exempt myself from that either. But um, yeah, in terms of the IT, it was always fun to see those who never found the unmute button or those who, as again, Sarah's uh, not alone in having the internet uh, just drop out at the perfect time in a training session or a demo, it's happened to all of us. 
but yeah, some uh, some some definite trends through uh, through the lockdown process. Thanks, David. On that, actually, I'm going to ask you to kind of bring it back to Workflow Max. So with, um, obviously, we've got a lot of accountants and bookkeepers that are on this webinar this morning. How do you think you can best support those guys when it comes to Workflow Max? I mentioned earlier on that we um, also deal with the sister product, the Zero Practice Manager. Um, it was about seven years ago that we were enrolled as uh, one of only four uh, companies in the UK as um, Zero's practice studio partners. So we literally had a mandate to help other accountancy and bookkeeping firms to implement effectively Workflow Max. Um, that in itself, is, it, it's a huge part of our work. And I would say at least 50% of what we do is with uh, accountancy firms and bookkeeping firms, et cetera. Um, we can help them directly. So in the ways that I described before, we can provide simple advice. We can answer easy questions if that's what's gonna help people decide that it's the right move to, to make to go onto the product. Um, all the way through to, as I said, consulting with them to make sure they get it right or actually physically performing the project for them so that they can actually get the, the great benefit of that expertise. At the same time, we can also help in a deeper sense because you know they've got their client bases as well, so we can be their expert as well. Obviously, they're going to learn the product themselves, but in that interim period, it's always good to have somebody that you can fall back on and ask those questions of and say, I've got a client who needs this. Is it going to work for them? So always happy to help in that respect as well. Okay, thanks, David. So, um, Liz, that takes me on to, uh, on to yourself. So what, 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 you, what can you do to kind of help best support um, our advisors with their clients? Yeah, I think um, advisors really look after their client relationship and they want mm. uh, they want the best for them. And they, they often see that operationally people are struggling, and um, but they want to give them a, a good solution. And I think choosing a piece of software is a really hard decision because it's not straightforward. You need to carry out proper evaluation and selection. Um, and I'm an independent software person. Um, I carry out lots of different scoping exercises, um, happy to answer loads of different questions. If Workflow Max fits the bill, then, then they have a trusted advisor who they can trust with that relationship, which um, I'm super important to make good client relationships. But overall, um, I just do lots of different software, really. Thanks, Liz. Um, so that kind of brings me to the end, actually, of our panel um, discussion with um, Andrew, David and Liz. You guys, have, has anybody got anything else that they'd like to add before we kind of open it up for some Q&A? No, nothing. OK, shall we start? Right, we'll have a look and see if there's any questions that have come up then whilst we've been on this. Let me have a quick look now. Do you want me to have a look? There's a couple of good ones that have come through, uh, Natalie. Oh, um, yes, please. Thanks, David. Yeah, yeah, which I thought I could uh, just throw at you. So uh, one of the ones was um, we touched on earlier, obviously, the linking to zero and the information that flows through. So I suppose what does that linking with zero look like? So someone's asked to quotes flow through to uh, zero and sales invoices as well. So that, that link between sort of workflow max and zero, what does that look like in the transfer of information? OK, Sarah, do you, do you want to answer that one for me? I can do. Um, so basically the link between Workflow Max and Zero. So Workflow Max, when you invoice your sales invoices, then the sales invoices, as soon as you hit approve, can either float through to Zero as draft or as an approved invoice, and you can send it from there. Um, purchase orders as well. So when you create a purchase order and you receive a purchase order, that will then flow through to Zero as a bill. Um, unfortunately, quotes do not flow through. So you can create your quotes and record them all in Workflow Max. Um, so it's only when, when you invoice all, all the bills that flow through, really. Well, that's great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and just to follow on from one of the questions that have come through, it says, can we use Workflow Max without zero? Uh, yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the answer to that. So that's fine. Definitely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, one, of the, one of the questions that's come through is, um, can you also pull out other visual types of charts? So can you, for example, pull out uh, the project plan into something like a Gantt chart or, or something a bit more visual? Um, is, is there options to do that within Workflow Max? Um, yeah, so in the a very simplified version, I guess. Um, so in job schedule and staff schedule, you do have that kind of gang chart where you can drag and drop um, extend job dates and things like that. And you can see who's working on, on on what job um, and how much capacity the staff members have got. Um, it is quite a simple view, um, but there are ad um, additional add-ons out there that can plug into Workflow Max that can show that. 
bit nicer. Cool, thank you. And also while we're talking about plugins is, does it integrate with other systems like Slack um, to give you updates in other places? Um, currently Slack, no. Um, we do have an add-on page on the website, so it's definitely worth um, having a look on there and seeing which add-ons do integrate with us. Um, but we are working on the API at the moment as well, so we'll hopefully see a lot more come through soon. Brilliant, okay. Um, one of the questions that's come through saying, uh, I'm an accountant, what's the difference between Workflow Max and Zero Practice Manager? Aren't they just the same thing? Um, so actually, currently we are going through a split. So they were they were the same thing. Um, they're basically the same product. Obviously, with um, Zero Practice Manager, that is more for accountants and bookkeepers. But currently, we are going through a bit of a split of the product, so that then Workflow Max can kind of be pulled away from Zero Practice Manager and really concentrate on um, improvements for the businesses, the end users, instead of the accountants and bookkeepers. And then Zero Practice Manager is going in. Um, to our practice hub and that will then be completely concentrated any releases will be concentrated on the accountants and bookkeepers needs so we are splitting um, over this weekend actually which is exciting exciting okay um, and one of the questions that's come through saying if my clients are using zero projects already what's the difference between zero projects and workflow max Okay, I feel like I'm answering all the questions. So Natalie, feel free to jump in if you like. Um, so Zero Projects obviously sits in Zero, um, and it's a, it's a pretty simple. It's more like a simple um, job management kind of tool. So um, it'll be more for you, like your one man bands. Um, it's definitely not as customizable as Workflow Max. Workflow Max is more of like the big job management solution. Um, so it really depends on needs. If you do want a more simplified, you've got your tasks and costs in there. Um, user permissions as well. Uh, Workflow Max has got really extensive user permissions, as I mentioned, whereas Zero Projects has just got one kind of user permission there. Um, so it really depends on what you need from the business, um, from the system. Um, but yeah, that basically. <laughs> Okay, yeah, great. And, and uh, this is a question for me, me really, because one of the things that I really like to look at for, for people who are coming onto the webinars is what the sort of, I suppose, the practical next steps are as well. Um, so in terms of really from that side of people who are looking at this today and think, okay, this either looks great for me and my practice or my clients, what actually are those practical next steps to sort of dip your toe in the water a little bit and try it out or try and get your clients enticed to it? How, how do people start talking to their clients about this? Um, that, right, yeah. I'll, um... Yeah, I'll answer that one. There we go, I'll <laughs> yeah. jump in. Um, so basically, they can set up a free 14-day trial. They just need to do that via our website. Um, at the end of this, Sarah's actually got a slide where we're going to give our details so they can contact any of us directly. Um, so I'd re recommend registering for um, a free 14-day trial and also for one of our free online webinars, whereby it will go through in a bit more depth than Sarah did earlier with a kind of a, you know, an end-to-end an -end demo, demonstration of the software. So that is what I would recommend. We've also, um, there is a link that sits on our website for the advisor training. So again, that might be something that they could look at. So under the resources tab, it sits in there and there's some kind of training and information, but mainly reach out to us directly and set up a trial would be my next steps. Yeah, okay, that's great. Yeah, I, I always like to go away with these things. There's lots of theory talked about, but it's a case of how do you actually practically get going when somebody's sitting there quite excited. So that's really good. Thanks, Natalie. Um, okay, so one of the questions that's come through, uh, it might be one a little bit more in depth to chuck a curveball at you, uh, at you all, is when you're sort of dealing with a system um, and you've got, for example, a project with lots of stages to it, um, in terms of sometimes you might have lots of detail in that project that you might want to sort of retain in the, in the project, but obviously keep it a bit more to yourself. Can you can you keep lots of information yourself and not always present that to the customer when you're sending out invoices and that type of thing, um, but keep more information in for yourself within the project? Um, Liz, Tobin, would you like to answer that one? Mm. Yeah, so when you're, for example, if you're quoting your customer, um, Sarah showed a little bit, you could, you can create a custom quote so that you only show the information that you want to be visible to your client. So you might have all your workings out in Workflow Max, but actually you just want to show them perhaps a, a wrapped up figure in, in regards to costing. Um, yeah, absolutely. And on invoices, um, I think David was talking about this earlier, custom fields are absolutely brilliant. If you want to store information um, about your customer or about anything about the job, uh, you can store it in custom fields, but that doesn't have to be pushed out to anything that's that's customer facing. So yeah, pretty, if you've got anything else to add to that, David? 
No, you're absolutely right. I mean, certainly the way that the um, the custom document templates uh, in Workflow Max operate, you can include or exclude pretty much anything that you want to. I mean, we've created documents that are um, descriptive, but only have a, a, a final figure. We've had others where they've got a lot of detail in there. So it's really up to the individual as to what they want to surface. Mm. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah. Can I make a comment on that? Is that um, I probably come up from a different lens in terms of I think the question was addressing what you recording lots of information but not sharing it with the client. We find we do that within a job because within a job number, we've got lots of facilities across phases and stages to put comments in. So what we're able to do is record what we're doing, why, and the issues all within the job. And that doesn't, and so it's in the job, so it doesn't even get through to the financial side. And we find that very useful. Brilliant, thanks for that, Andrew. And we've had we've had a good question coming from Simon actually, which is aimed at Liz and David, just to uh, quick keep you on your toes. Is what are your sort of top tips for a successful implementation, and have you got any gotchas that you should uh, avoid or be wary of? Do you want to go first? Or? Yeah, all right, Liz, I'll go first. Um, so I would say definitely preparation is key. Um, if you are looking at the system and you've made a decision that it's right for you, then look at your existing data. Um, if we can bring clean, tidy data into the system, then you've got a brilliant start. If we bring through 20 years of dross, then it's going to be full of mistakes and duplications and unnecessary information that you're then just going to have to cleanse. So it's a perfect opportunity to, to clean up and, and have something that's really, you know, tight and tidy for you to start the new system with. And Liz, yeah. yourself? Um, I find that it's it's an opportunity to sit down as a team um and I, I think andrew was talking about this before really work out what you want your new processes to be because you might do stuff in a certain way now but um take the opportunity uh, change things if you want to come up with a new process um, and that's the one that gets built out in workflow max so i think maybe that's something that can be overlooked because people you know rightly are keen to get going let's implement let's configure it's like hang on a minute let's just step back talk about what we want to achieve um and then I will make sure it's built to that, to what we need. But um, yeah, definitely not running before you can walk is uh, a top tip for me. Brilliant. Andrew, I suppose on the other side of the coin or sitting on the other side of the table, have you got any thoughts on, on, on the process from, from how you came at it as well? Um, yeah, I guess um, David already mentioned preparation. I think if you pull to, if you take the trouble to really uh, simply let uh, David or whoever's helping to sort of know and understand your business and export across just what they need. That's massive. Um, I think that uh, uh, also bizarrely, I mean, for us, because you can either choose to try and do it all yourself, but if you're on the other side of that, I think for us, it was very, you know, we're, we're busy people, we're changing things uh, which we need to use every day. So for us, the big thing was to have somebody like David in, uh, on a support package for the first three months of implementation, because we tried hard to do it ourselves. And if we needed his backup, he was there. And that was really, really helped in terms of a very smooth implementation. Brilliant, that's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, so we, our time is starting to draw to a close. And I know, Sarah, have you got some contact details that you want to put up on the screen as well? Well, yeah, just bear with me one second. Um, yep. So guys, if you do want to, um, if you are looking at implementing, then of course we've got Liz and David on the call that you've heard from. Um, so there's just their details. If you want to email them, um, kind of get some scoping with them or understand um, more what they do, then feel free to reach out to both of them or either of them. Um, and then also just quickly, myself and Natalie, if you do want to contact us around anything with Workflow Max, if you want a more extensive demo, then please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we will also email over the next couple of days as well um, for any of you that have attended. Um, so you'll have our contact details anyway, but feel free to email us and we can jump on a screen share session or, or whatnot. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you, Sarah. And there are a couple of questions that we didn't quite get to answering fully, but what we'll do is make a note of those and we'll make sure that we just follow up with people. Um, so uh, you feel like you've got your questions answered and um, 
hopefully you can sort of go on and, and try the system out and use it as well. So um, just to uh, push people as well to have a look in the latest issue of XU Magazine, issue 26, because we did a cover piece in there on Workflow Max and some of the wonderful features that they've got and the work that they're doing there. So if you want to go and read it a, uh, a little bit more, if you've uh, got a bit of lunch now that you were going to sit down over and go head over to the XU Magazine website and read that as well, because there's some really good stuff in there. Um, about Workflow Max um, as well. So thanks uh, thanks to everyone for today. I'm not sure if any of the panelists or anyone got any final things you want to say or we were good. No, just thanks very much for yeah. inviting us in. Yes. Thank, thank you to XU Magazine for hosting this as well. Yeah, no, thank th you. Thank you. Thank you. And thankfully, we didn't have too many technical problems. Uh, either. Although my lights have just gone off. So I'm not quite, quite sure why the electricity has just gone off or the lights have gone off. Some of them gone off or not, but we're, uh, we're getting there, aren't we? So, <laughs> so well, thank, thanks to everyone for jumping on today. Uh, like Sarah says, we'll follow up with an email um, and there's going to be a recording of this as well. So I saw a couple, a couple of people that came in halfway through. So uh, we'll make sure that we get that across to you so you can get the start of the webinar as well and just catch up so you don't feel like you've missed out. Um, and thanks to everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.